Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about those final polishing off tips and little pointers to keep in mind for the math methods and specialist maths exams. And for those of you who are new here, my name is Darren and I'm a third year medical student studying at Monash University here in Melbourne, Australia. Technically, I am almost finished with third year. I've completed all my classes and just of my exams next week. Before we begin, I'd like to say a couple of things. Firstly, to the year 12s, good work on completing that first exam, so English language, English or English literature. And I think exam period is pretty long. It's a couple weeks. And sometimes you may feel like you want the exams to be done really soon, and then you can go off and do whatever. And then sometimes you may feel that you want to have more time to prepare for the exams. And instead of that sort of oscillating up and down, I found it useful to kind of think of it that the exams will come when they come. The clock's going to keep ticking. The exam's going to come next Wednesday. It's going to be there next Friday. And I will just take it day by day, do my preparation, let the time flow by itself, and then sit the exam when it comes and give it my best shot then. So that is, I guess, one way of thinking about it and navigating through exam period. To the year 11s and other people who are sitting three fours for the first time, it can be really nerve wracking and methods may be your first three four. For me in year 11, methods was my first three four and the Chinese exam was a bit later in that exam period. And I remember being really in my head about the whole VC first three four subjects. And in the exam, I remember sitting there and not focusing on the exam and just thinking too much about what the exam represented. So I remember sitting there doing the exam and thinking that this is my study score. What I'm writing here is going to decide that. And while true, I think that that wasn't very helpful for me to think of. I didn't e enjoy the exam experience. I felt like I wasn't able to concentrate that well. I was distracted, overthinking everything. And I didn't do as well in the results aspect as well. In year 12, I reflected on that experience. And also there are much more subjects in year 12. So I feel like having more SACs, more stressful environments, more exams meant that I had a more balanced approach rather than when you have one three, four, it can seem like your entire world because it's that first three, four, it's that only three, four for the year. And in that case, there are kind of two aspects of dealing with stress, in my opinion. One is kind of that practical aspect and that comes from your preparation. And I have other videos out on that. But there's also that kind of psychological as aspect of that you're just stressed, you're just upset because it's a pretty important exam and it's coming up soon. In those cases, I think it's useful to view the exam as what it is rather than what you think it is or rather what you think or rather than what you think it represents. The exam, the methods exam, whatever one is coming up is just a fairly important exam that contributes to your VC score. That's kind of it. You prepare for it like an exam that is kind of important and you sit the exam. When you start attributing other things to it, the fact that this is make or break or it's this massive deal, it's my first taster of VC. When you start putting these titles on, I think that kind of detracts from your preparation and adds stress rather than, rather than value to the way you're approaching the exam. So it's not the end of the world, Everything will spin after the exam's done. You'll still have your sport. You still have your friends, still have your family. Everything is mostly the same. And in the words of my swimming coach, I would advise you guys not to overthink it. With the structure for today's video, it will be set out in these aspects. So first, I'll talk a bit about timings. Next, your Brown reference. Thirdly, what to do in reading time. Then what to do with difficult questions. Checking answers after, which is a, a common common activity that some people participate in, and then some general tips at the end. Firstly, timings. The main point with timings at this point in your preparation is to go with whatever you've practiced and trust yourself. There are many different approaches to timing. Some people like to rush through the question, so a minute per mark, some people say, and then you have time to check at the end. And then some of my friends who also did, who did better than me in the math subjects, viewed it as kind of moving through each question slowly, really taking their time with each question, making sure they got it right the first time through. I think there are different approaches, but whatever has worked with you, whatever you found useful, settles your nerves, is able to achieve results for you, go with that and trust yourself. Next, 
is the idea that the questions may be easier or harder than you expected. And you may be more or less nervous than you expected. There are some variables in the exam. You might see question five of multiple choice and be like, hmm, that's a lot harder than the usual one. Or you may see an entire extended response question and be a bit confused about it. Or you yourself may be a bit nervous. Something may have happened or you've just, you just feel really nervous because it's the actual exam. I think regardless of that, don't deviate from what you normally do, but trust yourself and go with the timings and go with the pacing that you usually do. I think sticking with what you're familiar with and what you've practiced is the best course of action. So overall, don't change your approach. Secondly, the bound reference. The advice for this is pretty straightforward. One, make it early. I pushed it a little bit late in year 11 because I didn't really use a bound reference in my preparation. And then I started printing out stuff, sticking together, having to go to Officeworks to get it binded, maybe to get it bound the day before, I think, or even the day of the maths exam. And it's just a lot of stress. It's a bit annoying to think of. So try and complete it and have everything you want in there early on. The next point is to make it out of practicality, not insecurity. A lot of people go a bit crazy over the bound reference because it's something you can bring in from home into the exam. And once again, rather than seeing it for what it is, which is just something that's meant to help you check your answers or remind you of things, some people see it as what it could be, as a, as a lifeline. And I've seen people stick together lots of textbooks, big chunky pieces of paper. And I think that's just, well, if you really need it, sure, but that's unlikely. It's more sort of insecurity and feeling like somehow that will be helpful. And also feeling insecure that they may miss out on something if they don't have that textbook there. I think it's much better if you once again have confidence in yourself. Think about what do I want in my bound reference? Do I want some quotes? Do I want some memes? Do I want a couple important questions that I thought I learned a lot from? Do I want some some uh, some formulas in there? And just put in those things that you genuinely need and that will actually help you in the exam. If you're curious about what mine had, so the first couple of pages were notes about my common mistakes and then I had some calculator shortcuts and then I had some printouts of difficult questions. And you may be wondering, did I actually use it in my exams? I think I used it twice in the methods, methods exam and also for, for special as well. What to do in reading time? Reading time for all subjects is pretty useful. Until year 12, I think I sort of underestimated the utility of reading time. I could just kind of be like, I'll just read it, whatever. But it's actually quite important for all your subjects. And for maths, I think you can make quite substantial progress. You can make really, you can kind of see your progress because you work through the questions. For exam one, I just go through the questions in order and try and develop an approach. So I would think to myself, what's this question asking? What will I do in the first one to two lines? So I may think to myself, okay, this question is about finding the minimum amount of time needed. So I'll probably use the derivative of part B and then solve for that equals to zero. And that will probably probably result in some kind of answer. I usually don't like working with numbers too much during reading time, just because there's a chance of messing up the numbers when you have them all in your head. As for exam two, once again, different approaches, go with what you're used to. I had some friends who liked working through the multiple choice questions and just kind of circling them when writing time started. And for me, I liked going through the extended response questions more because I thought they were more like a story. I needed to figure out a bit how A linked to B to C to D to the rest of the question. And so I liked thinking about that during reading time instead. Once again, up to you. Go with what you're comfortable with. How to deal with difficult questions. There are, there's a practical aspect of that. So how do you literally try and solve that question? And there's also the aspect of psychologically. When you see a difficult question, especially if you're aiming really high and then you see a question that you just don't really know how to approach, it can be quite intimidating. So with that practical aspect, that's that second point there, which is to just give it your best shot. I think about what the question is getting at, look at earlier parts of the question and reread the story and the scenario and see if it's telling you anything more. Just kind of reassess the situation. Think back to your knowledge about what kinds of questions you've done in the past and the knowledge that you have, because it will be testing knowledge that you've learned before. It's just a matter of whether you can see whether that can be applied or how it can be applied to this question. So just look at the information and try to analyze it and give you a best shot. In terms of the more psychological aspect, it's going to be a rare scenario when, and an, I guess in a sense, an ideal scenario where you are able to solve all the questions and it's pretty easy. I would argue it's not an ideal scenario because it's 
it's almost too easy. Um, but it's a very rare situation that you're, you see all the questions, you know how to do them, everything comes out easily. So I think relax, right? It's expected that there will be some difficult questions and some questions that will take a bit of thinking for you to understand. And so that's kind of the approach. With the actual question, if you've tried a lot and you can't solve it, think to yourself, that's okay. Don't let this question take up your brain space, take up your stress, take up your thinking, because you're going to be distracted for the other 98% of the exam. And my special tutor told me this, and I agree with it a lot. If you're able to score marks on every question that you can do, then that's a lot of marks already. If you're able to maximize those marks, all the questions you can do, you do them. The question is a bit confusing. You can't really solve. Oh, well, you've still scored a lot of marks. And also, like I said, don't develop tunnel vision on that question and be so fixated on solving it because you know it's just at the edge of your mind, but you've spent so much time and you can't solve it. Keep in mind that one mark from finding a silly mistake in question 2B is the same as that one mark from question 4F, the last part of the, the second last question of the exam, which is so difficult, which is also the same as a mark from question 5A. What I mean by that is the earlier parts of the questions are sometimes easier. So if you're finding the, the latest parts of a question, so D, E, F, quite difficult, just try 5A, try 6B, and you may be able to solve, solve those questions. And that will actually help you gain marks. A lot of people may wonder about checking answers afterwards, especially for VC and math. You have YouTube channels, you have people posting the written answers everywhere, even in your, your class chat. My view on this is that if you don't usually go through the answers right after an exam, then don't, because it can be quite destabilizing. Even for, for me, I thought to myself that, okay, if I look at the result, if I look at the answers, I'll kind of know what I got wrong. And so for exam two, then I will, I will not make the same mistake, which practically and logically makes sense. But when you look at the answers and you go through them and you realize you made this question wrong or you got this right or, and then you made this, this silly mistake, it's really, really demoralizing. And the, the, I think the benefit of actually learning something to help with exam two is a bit unlikely. So up to you, if you usually check exams and you deal with it well, go for it. If you don't, I would advise you not to. If you're in year 12, then you're already a little bit into exam period and you may have had some experience in early years with VCE. Just keep at it and keep working through it. If you have particular questions for me, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, make sure to help each other out as well. And if you're in year 11, then good work so far in the year. Learn from the experience. I learned a lot from year 11 because one, I didn't do as well as I wanted to, but two, I also made sure to look back at the experience and think about it, think about what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy and how to improve those aspects as well. And I definitely remember being a bit wowed by the whole VC exam system. It is something that the academic side of school builds towards. And so it can seem like this kind of peak, but view it for what it is, just an exam and prepare for it like you would for an exam. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you all next time.